7 to 1, example 9. Uh, we're still dealing with this quasi-static realm where the magnetic field is changing, but it's not changing fast enough that it should make a difference. So we should probably be able to get away with using uh, the Biosovar law and Ampere's law and all those different things. Okay, so we have an infinitely long straight wire carrying a current I that varies according to time. This, of course, generates a B field that's pointing perpendicular around I. Um, the B field is going to vary with time, of course. And that's going to be equal to mu naught I all over uh, 2 pi r. Uh, we've solved that before, so I'm not going to solve it again here. So if we take a, an Empyrean loop, um, not to calculate B, but to calculate E given the change in uh, the flux. Okay, so we have a distance here of R naught. We have a distance here of R. Um, we have a length L. Okay, so we're dealing with an Ampereian loop here. So we get um, that the, the loop of E dot DL has to equal to minus the change in the flux. which is just minus the change in time of the flux. Okay. Um, well, the vertical components, E doesn't have a vertical component. It's going to point um, along with I. You know, you, you can do that just by simple inspection. The, the B vector is like, let's, let's look at this flat plane. So over here, the B vector is going to point into the page, right? So it's going to change up or down. So the E vector has to point curling around, but there's symmetry in the horizontal direction, so it can only point along with the wire, right? And so we only have to worry about the E vector at um, R naught times L. We subtract the E vector at R times L because you're going backwards, and that is going to be equal to minus D by DT of the integral of B mu naught I, which varies according to T, over 2 pi R, and the dA vector is going to be dr dl, okay, because we're in the square coordinates there, Cartesian coordinates. Um, so we can pull out some things. We can pull out a factor of L um, because L is not going to vary anyway. So we have a minus L. Uh, we have mu naught. 2 pi comes out. Uh, the I doesn't vary according to R, so we get dI by dt. And then we get integral 1 over R dr, and the R is going to vary from R naught all the way up to R. Okay, and so that's going to be equal to um, minus er is equal to uh, we're I'm getting rid of the l's minus mu naught two pi di by dt times uh, log of r not r minus log of r naught. Okay. Now he uses a fancy trick here where he says k is going to be equal to e of r naught, this guy over there, um, uh, minus mu naught over 2 pi di by dt times log of r naught. Okay, so this guy, uh, basically move this guy over to the, the left side. Um, so we get k, move this guy over to the right side. And so we get E of R is equal to mu naught over 2 pi di by dt log of R plus this constant k. Now, um, k isn't going to vary. There's no R dependence in k. So, it, you know, depending on where you move on the R scale with E, k is not going to change. However, there could be a time dependence. And we're going to get into chapter um, 9 and talk about how that time dependence affects this problem. Now one thing that you probably didn't notice is this term right here, as r increases, this increases. The limit is, as r goes to infinity, of, of log of r is infinity, right? And so we have this electric field that increasingly grows the further and further away from the origin that you go, okay? And this is not right. That can't possibly be the correct result. And indeed, what we've done is we basically breached the limit of where quasi-statics can take us. So, no, so the actual physical laws that work here uh, don't include um, the Biot-Savart law and, and appearing laws and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the, the rule is, in this case, is that the, the further you get from that wire, 
the longer it takes for news of changes in that current to reach you, okay? Because news travels at the speed of light. And if you had, if you were changing I, such that it took a time period of tau to have a significant change in I, okay? That means that that um, the magnetic field or the change in magnetic field far away is significant enough to produce an electric field, okay? So tau is that time distance. Um, it could be the period of, of, of oscillation or whatever, depending on, on what kind of formula you have there. Then the general rule is R has to be much smaller than C times that time, to, that time interval. And this equation will stand. But beyond that, you, ha you can't be using the same physics you're using right now to solve uh, what E would be, okay? Um, as you might expect, you know, in real life, we do have long wires that change their currents that produce radio waves that travel infinite distances. Okay, so this is the wrong formula for calculating it far away. Okay, this isn't this isn't the formula that you'd be using uh, because it's wrong. So anyway, that's it for section seven two one Faraday's law. Next, we're going to talk about inductance, uh, basically getting current in one wire to cause a current in another wire, and um, that's kind of fun. So hope you have fun. Take care and bye.